We live in a world where technology can enable us to see through walls and around corners. We can talk to our loved ones on the other side of the world and see their smiles. All of these innovations have been brought about by the ability to code. Coders, programmers and developers are our new rock stars. Currently, we only have a handful of household names revered for technological innovation and world change. So who will be our next innovators? Who will be addressing our real world problems as we increase our population and use up more of the Earth's natural resources? Our children. Our children are our future. You know, kids only learn to code because they're interested in it, because they're passionate about it, because they get excited about it. The national curriculum can't provide the stretch these interested individuals need. There are no professional networks for them, and they code largely isolated and definitely in back bedrooms. So I'm part of a network of volunteers who help bring these kids together, people who have got rudimentary coding skills already, and we organize an event and challenge for them each summer. The challenge is to build one piece um, of a web app or a mobile application with one piece of open data. They get the opportunity to network and start to build those really important mentoring networks and supportive community that they wouldn't have elsewhere. So here's an example. Here's Issy, Isabel Long. At 16 years old, she built this, GovSpark, a way to compare and contrast the energy outlet of uh, government department's data. Number 10 and Cabinet Office liked it. They brought her, brought her in to see them. It's now funded and uh, now still an app that's ongoing. And it's a, it's a resource that they didn't have before. This summer, we're organizing uh, the Festival of Code, kind of the largest young hackathon in the UK, possibly the world, will bring together 500 young kids, supported by 50 businesses in the UK that have thrown up with their doors, that have developers to help support these young kids, to help them learn to code. And again, they have to build a, a piece of uh, a technology, an app, or a mobile application. And they're all brought together at the end of the week, and they share it with uh, a great big show and tell with industry and peers and press and government. And the reason they do this is it, it gives them a professional leg up. They start to then not only form those mentoring relationships, those kind of key friendships, but it actually helps them put it into a professional context. And some of these kids are solving real world problems. This is Kevin Lewis. He's 14 years old. Together with Sam and uh, Craig and Robert, he went to an open hack day to work on uh, Re Refugees United. Refugees United are a charity that are helping to reconnect the 55,000 separated families. So the group got together and looked at what was interesting for them, and they wanted to understand how individuals understood their own national identity to be able to help them find each other. They built a better way of being able to interrogate the information and data on mobile, they built an SMS and text interface, as well as a Facebook app. And then Kevin, with Roy, got together and created um, some value in what's called the family story identity. In the UK, we might look at uh, family membership by name or date of birth. And these guys you know, looked at what's important to the culture of which they were trying to search for their families and came up perhaps with the father's role in the community you know, the previous local imam, or some way of being able to identify themselves and give themselves those resources. So really, we found by connecting young people and mentoring them and giving them the opportunity to work on a real-world problem, they're making choices about their future, which is fundamental, and one way may help us with all of our futures. Thank you.